Archimedes began to ply his engines and shot against the land forces of the assailants all sorts of missiles and immense masses of stones, which came down with incredible din and speed. Nothing could ward off their weight, but they knocked down in heaps those who stood in their way and threw their ranks into confusion. At the same time, huge beams were suddenly projected over the ships from the walls, which sank some of them with great weights plunging down from on high. Others were seized at the prow by iron claws, or beaks like those of cranes, drawn straight up into the air, and then plunged stern foremost into the depths, or were turned round and round by means of enginery within the city and dashed upon the steep cliffs that jutted out beneath the board, who perished in the wrecks. Frequently, too, a ship would be lifted out of the water into midair, whirled hither and thither, as if it hung there, a dreadful spectacle, until its crew had been thrown out and hurled in all directions, when it would fall empty upon the walls, or slip away from the clutch that had held it. It chanced that Archimedes was alone, working out some problem with the aid of a diagram, and having fixed his thoughts and eyes upon the matter of his study, he was not aware of the incursion of the Romans or of the capture of the city. Suddenly, a soldier came upon him and ordered him to accompany him to Marcellus. This Archimedes refused to do until he had worked out his problem, whereupon the soldier flew into a passion, drew his sword, and dispatched him. It is generally agreed that Marcellus was afflicted at his death and turned away from his slayer as from a polluted person and sought out the kindred of Archimedes and paid them honor.